Let's do that. Oh, guess what? The map we're going into also has fog in it. So... <laughs> we just got done with one map with went One set of maps with fog. And we're about to go into another. So, uh, hope you all like atmosphere and by, or, or, yeah, atmosphere, by which I mean fog. Um, this one is a much more mixed in reviews than the one we just came out of, but it also has far fewer ratings. Uh, so this is another Ricky T23 map. Um, since we had some time, I figured let's toss this one in here. Um, so this is Catatonic Fits of Despair, also released in 2012. Uh, I need to make a mass folder to make this run correctly because it's just loose files. Pretty short read me on this one. Um, Wake one single player map. <laughs> Date of release 17th August 2012. Yep, we still playing Quake. Build time 13 days. You can do whatever you want with this map. Not not any lore or anything, it's just this is it is what it is, so we're gonna find out what it is in a minute. Where is my quake window? It doesn't say anything about how to run it either, so I'm guessing it's just base quake. So here we are, let's go ahead and start the timer. Oh, I need to hang on. Okay. They're giving me the Thunderbolt immediately? That's... a bold move. This beginning room reminds me of something. They're giving me Thunderbolt with not enough ammo. Oops. Okay, I'm almost dead, but there you go. Okay. There was a super nail gun here, armor here, health here, and a switch. Whoops, did not mean to switch to that. <clears throat> Well, there's the second switch. I guess the idea is to get these guys to infight? Well, so much for that, he just landed on him and he died. Interesting that these don't recede into the ground completely, usually they do that. Now they're giving me a whole ton of stuff. What the heck? Okay, I was hoping that would work. It didn't. Well, that's why they gave me a bunch of nails. This is where I started. Hey, there's health back here, though. Yeah, this is a Ricky map. Open this. Are we gonna find a super shotgun eventually? Let me just make sure I haven't like skipped anything else out here. I don't think so. Assuming this opens via switch somewhere. You watched him play this days ago, then yesterday Colossus played it with Ricky on chat.
Oh, I was hoping he was going to land on him. Yeah, attack that guy. There you go. I mean, this is begging for infighting. shells because that's what they're giving me. Where's the door? I got stuck. Okay, he just killed that guy. He's helping. There was health out here, right? Yeah, there we go. Was he really playing this days ago? I feel like the last time, I guess it's been a couple weeks, the last time I checked his channel, he was doing a bunch of, like, Doom via DOS box or something. Or no, not via DOS box. He has an actual rig that he uses for it, if I recall correctly, to play it on actual DOS. Uh-oh. A shambler in a very slightly curved room. That's, that's trouble brewing. That's a secret? Okay. Was that just there, or did I shoot to open it? Who knows? A door has opened. Can I do anything interesting from here? Doesn't really seem like it. Oh. Um, wait a minute. Hang on. What? Oh, that was the secret. That just closed up again by itself. What the hell? Or... Or the door that opened is directly below that. One of the two. Kind of doubt it, though. Well, I think we found the door. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez! Was not expecting the entire cavalry. I wish I had a super shotgun. Really thinking I missed it. That felt, uh, what did that feel like? That felt more like, uh, Necro stuff or something. Like the, the nonsense hordes in the secret map uh, in uh, NES P09 or something. I mean, that was the case in both Quake and in Doom. Well, except for hit scanners. If I recall correctly, hit scanners and Doom would fight with each other. Well, actually, is that true in Quake also? Like, will Grunts infight? I want to think Grunts might infight. But yeah, other than that, enemies don't care. Well, we found it, finally. There's probably a dude up there. I wonder if there's been a secret with an explosive weapon by now that I've missed, because uh, this is all kind of begging for it. Oh dear. Oh dear! Where was that sound coming from? Oh, I was hoping she would hit him. Oh, there he is. Hello. Found you. 
He got stuck up there and just did me a favor. All right, cool. Also, I don't know why the boar was stuck up there. All right, I will take all of this. Thank you. Oh, where'd these guys come from? Back there, probably. What's up with that? Something's gonna yeet out of here, right? <laughs> Good job, guys. I almost tripped over that one. There's more armor. I feel like most or all of the Ricky maps I played so far before this were base maps, so this is kind of interesting from that perspective of like, hey, it's, it's not a base map. Still doing the colored lighting thing though. Well, he's dead. Oh, got stuck there. I guess the other guy's already dead. Hey, look, it's John Travolta. Oh, sure, make me waste my nails. Alright, he's dead. Uh, is that telling me the key is that way or the door is that way? I feel like the, uh, the Vor sound... I wonder if we can do these in any order. That's interesting, because we got gold and silver right here. Interestingly, you've also got an icon for that here, but no icon for gold there, so they're a little inconsistent. I wonder why. Hey, Ricky! <laughs> We're playing one of your maps because I had time. After Honey. And Honey came out in 2012, and this came out in 2012, so... Close enough. I was originally planning to do this, uh, I was planning to do Honey, and then Something Wicked, and then these two maps, uh, Catatonic and Quarantine, but figured I would like to, uh, interesting that this tells me about the Silver Key thing, which is all the way over there. Um, I wonder if that'll show gold on that side, too. I figured better off doing, like, some individual maps to round out the night, rather than start Something Wicked and not have time to finish it. You just finished Alkaline, best pack you've played. I'm definitely hyped about that one. It's funny, because... Uh, I don't know if it was Moby Loke or someone else in chat... Uh, mentioning Or Flecked or someone... Talking about Alkaline being really strong. Because, like, I was looking at the Honey reviews... And, like, how many of them were, there were... And how overwhelmingly positive it was. And I was just like... I feel like Honey doesn't set itself as far apart... From other things I've played... As people make it out to be in the reviews... And I was really kind of confused by it. And and someone in chat was mentioning, like, Alkaline seems really good, but obviously that only came out, like, this year. But yeah, I'm a sucker for base maps. I know Alkaline really pushes the envelope in terms of, like, the textures and environments and whatnot. So, hey, there's red armor here that you can almost not see. I wonder what they're preparing me for. I kind of don't want to pick it up. Because it would kind of be a waste right now. I heard an ogre. I hear a spawn. Uh, it's dead, I guess. Oh my god, what a mess. Well, this is... Imagine laser tag, except everything is terrifying. 
And you've got this room. Hey, it's another spawn. Oh, nice. He just helped. Cool. This is going to end poorly. Or maybe not. Where was that armor? I could use it now. Okay, that one's dead. Well, that was exciting. See, that's... I was commenting on how, like, Honey didn't feel like the usual kind of exciting that I expect from CZG maps. This might not be quite that kind of exciting either, but this was a lot closer to what I expected. Okay, we survived. Uh, let me catch up here. CCG's masks have a certain level of finesse. I definitely feel that way. I definitely felt like a lot of the earlier ones, like not even Insomnia, the other earlier ones, always had like some kind of exciting, like arena ambush kind of thing going on. And I felt like that was lacking specifically in Honey. But I can definitely get behind like Honey just having really good architecture, really smooth flow not relying on horde combat and still being pretty damn challenging in some spots. I also accidentally played the uh, the second map, the poison one, on hard difficulty. I thought I picked normal. And that explained a lot because I was running out of ammo a lot in that. On hard. Okay, I don't want to waste that armor, so I want to try to do this without getting touched up too much. I swear this has given me, like, Necro Survive This vibes, though. That was a waste. I don't know why I picked that up, but okay. Yeah, it will, it will take me a while to get to Alkaline, especially since I'm planning to switch things up in October. Uh, switch over to playing Dusk, and then I might actually go on to Quake 2 stuff before getting back to more packs. You think Particle Shotguns should be the new norm, and that's your only real complaint with Alkaline. Particle shotguns took, some, like, non-hitscan shotguns, took some getting used to for me in Arcane Dimensions, but I did get used to them eventually. I mean, I don't know, though. I feel like, I feel like shotguns being hitscan has a specific purpose. It's the only hitscan weapon you have. Nails are not hitscan. And so, like, nails are good for precision, but you have to deal with the fact that they're not hitscan. Alkaline is the best pack you've played, fast track it. I'm trying to do things, I mean like, Arcane Dimensions was the one thing I did not do in chronological order, basically. Or at least rough by year chronological order. Okay, good, they ate that for me. Well, he's very dead. Also, it's kind of hard to see with how dark it is here. Okay, I have not saved in a while. Let's save. That's fascinating. But this is what we're here for. I th think. No, that's what you need the key for. Okay, I stand corrected. What just happened? Uh... 
Did I find a bug, or should I be using a different source port? I bonked this wall with the axe, and errors happened. Now I'm a little worried, but let's see what this does. Uh... Well, I live here now. Oh dear. Yeah, I see you. God damn it. I tap danced over that grenade. Oh god, this is bad. Oh geez, there's a freaking shambler. Alright, now this feels like a Ricky T23 map. What about that boar? Where did it go? It was there. Yeah, okay, you guys can argue over that. I guess that argument ended really fast. Oh yeah, I was gonna comment on the, uh... Wait, did it not get the shoot? Oh, it's dead. Okay, it didn't get the shoot. I was gonna comment on the war noises, because CV Maniac was talking about it. To me, it sounds like a cat hissing... ...slowed down or something, I don't know. Oh, it's right there, okay. I'm out of nails, I don't like that. Oh, I'm full on Thunderbolt ammo? I guess I should use some of it. Probably would have been wise to use some of it on the Shambler before. You need to tell people that Alkaline is based. <laughs> oh, God. Someone in your chat thought this had no exit, but you did get confused. That's like, uh... Okay, so that happens to mappers, too. Because that's the thing that happens with, like, you know, I'm a software engineer, with code you write, and it's like, if you don't, if you, if you don't write your code clearly, or, or you don't explain weird things you had to do and why you had to do them, you come back to it and you're like, you know, you come back to it yourself in three months and you're like, why did I do this? What does this do? Uh, so I was down there before. Oh, hello, John Travolta showed up again. Those guys took a while to wake up. These guys are very nearsighted, like possibly even more nearsighted than I am. Oh, I'm out of shotgun shells. That's not good. I have nothing but grenades, which I don't have a weapon to use. And Thunderbolt. This seems like a problem. Okay, we found something. I also found a boar. Uh, oops. Oh, hey, it's that hole that I was wondering about before. Oh, shit. That brought me all the way... Oh, okay, wait a minute. That brought me back here, though. Okay. I was on the other side of that just now, and I just fell out. So, I kind of need to retrace my steps a whole bunch. If I want to get back there. Was this ammo here the entire time? Did I really not need it before? I guess I'm glad I came back here. Hang on. Can I do something from, like, one of these sides or something? No? Not really? I don't really need that. I don't really want to pick it up. I might 
might not have a choice. I didn't really have a choice. Not getting those armor... Well, we had to get this one. Dancing in the Dark Sun from Alkaline has your favorite map ending from Quake Maps. I mean, I think to this point, Tears of the False God takes a lot of superlatives for me. Having played Arcane Dimensions at this point, but not Alkaline. But there's a lot of modern day Quake maps that I gotta get around to that will probably heavily skew the scale. Up with that showing both keys. Also, always enter a portal from the back at least once. There's still more dudes in here, though. Wasn't there a vor around here? Like, didn't I fall down? Well, there's the gold key, so hang on a sec. Does this actually warp me backwards? Uh... Okay. Let's try going through forwards. That did the exact same thing. I am disappointed. Alright, well then we just need to figure out the gold key then, apparently. I didn't want to pick that up, did I? That wasn't a- I don't think that was a telefrag, although I don't know what was there. It kind of looked like one, but I didn't hear it. I think it would have been more noticeable if it was an actual telefrag. I feel like the signs were pointing me to the door before, but like, okay, so I was here. And I guess we can't do anything there yet. It's weird that this shows both. But also, since I do have the silver key, I could go the other way. I have not gone the silver key direction at all yet. How the hell do I get out of here? I just went in a circle. I don't know. That's pointing me down here. No, it should be this way. Yeah, here we go. Now we're actually coming out of here. Okay, so now we're back here. Okay. Oh, jeez. Not okay. What was he doing? Whoops, I forgot I don't have a regular nail gun. Okay, good enough. That was a bit awkward. Have I been down there? Pretty sure I've been down there. Oh, yeah, okay, now we're up here. Oh, what? Why are they? They're very blue. 
Might want to see a doctor. Wish I had explosives right now. Trying to use mostly shells because I don't have that many nails. Oh, hey, I think we might be getting explosives. Yup. Is there still another one out here? Yup. Okay, we have explosives finally. I think the door was supposed to go down, not back. Yo, the best thing... I don't remember what pack this was even in. It might have even been something official. I don't remember. The best thing that I'm pretty sure was wrong that ever happened to me in a Quake pack was there was a button on the floor. It was like the pentagram type button, so it's normally the kind of thing you see on a wall, but it was on the floor. But when you stepped on it, it didn't go down. It went to the side. That was the most bizarre thing ever. You believe this has, has gone on longer than the legally mandated rocket launcher time? I don't know, sometimes rocket launchers are just secrets. Okay, so... That was fortunate. Where is the boar? There it is. So, Veronica, I have the high ground. So now we need to go back there, because now that is actually reachable. Didn't expect John Travolta to cover that much ground that quickly. And I'm out of nails again. Uh, now how did I get up there? Here we go. Okay. Maybe I should get that armor, because I'm not sure I'm going to be back here ever again. Now... I like how that's actually pointing up. forget, where does this take me relative to... I'm pretty sure this takes me to close to where the gold door is. Yeah. Here it is. I still don't know what happened over here. I definitely hear portal noises. We're definitely going somewhere else. Oh, I like that it actually restarted the lift sound there. So it doesn't just fade out and end up completely silent. So now we're above that part. Which was above the other part. Oh jeez, that just closed behind me. Yep, it did. And now, we get the part that's shown in the screenshot. I have to remember I have grenades now. And I'm missing with all of them. I'm seriously missing with all of them. Uh, I'm stuck. Here we go. I'm my own worst enemy here. I'm already out of armor. I did very, very terribly to start this. Like, I did a very bad job. Uh, 
That one is still going. And there's another one. I like how that went right between them, though. Always does. Oops, I'm dead. Alright, I deserved that. Uh, so yeah, let's take this armor and go back there again. Probably actually save at the top of this, not at the bottom. Looks like a Quake 2 boss already. Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. It was reminding me of some stuff in Doom 64, but that's because anything with fog reminds me of Doom 64. Oh, what's that one map that ends with... I think it ends with a Cyber Demon fight in the starting room or something. And that starting room has a ton of, like, columns and fog. It was kind of reminding me of that. Uh, don't walk in there yet. Save. Much better start this time. Do I need that yet? You just run around like crazy. Oops. I think the boars may have just spawned in. Did that one actually not clear it? No. There you go, another Gib Devor. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Still no sign of a rocket launcher yet. Maybe, maybe in a secret that I missed. Now this this map is definitely a lot nicer on ammo than the CCG maps I was playing in Honey. I always find it funny how the, the two types of knights will infight. So there's more armor here. I have to wonder why. Whoops. Where the heck did you come from? This sky is cool, though. I don't know whether this is actually the color of the skybox or if it's a combination of, like, colored lighting in the skybox. Because the fog is also this color, so I'm kind of guessing the latter. Whoops. Did not actually expect to successfully bait out the one-two punch there. the fog and sky texture. Okay. I I instinctively say skybox when it's not technically a skybox. That's true. Like I definitely know like <laughs> there are a couple places in Hexen 2 where you can pretty much touch the sky. One of the uh one of the Realms Deep games I was playing very much felt like it had quake inspired sky stuff going on. 
I think that was ask A S K E. All right, we're we're hitting something important here. Also, this is kind of cool. Wait, is this the exit? It's the exit, but also double John Travolta's and also a random night. And I am handling this extremely poorly right now. But I think we're okay. I have seven health. But we're also at the end of the map, and we've killed everything. What happens if I go through backwards? The same thing. I only found one secret. I feel bad about that. And I think that one secret might have been a timed thing. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still not sure what to make of that portal noise I saw. I heard in, in front of the gold key door that gave me an error when I whacked a wall with the axe. And yeah, no ro I didn't find a rocket launcher. There's probably a secret with a rocket launcher, if I had to guess. But yeah, that was a cool map. I think this might... I, I was thinking before, Ricky, this might be the first map of yours I've played that is not a base map. Because, let's see. You did E4M1 Remix, right? That's obviously a base map. Um, the Hand That Feeds You... And there's like one or two others that I'm just spacing out on the names on, even though I was looking at the list of things I played like five minutes ago. Well, not five minutes ago. 35 minutes ago. Um, Slave to a Machine. Those were both base maps, I believe. One of the secrets is inaccessible. Okay. <laughs> And then, actually, wait. Three Towers and a Sick Base and Stark Monstrosity were also you, right? And I think all of those were base maps? So yeah, this is the first non-base map of yours that I've played. And it's pretty cool. You have one medieval map in SM141. I feel like Francis might have mentioned that. What is SM141? Because that page doesn't exist. Also, let me put on some music because we'll talk about this level and see what other people said about it, too. Oh, SM141 pack. Speed mapping pack 141. Hate. You have one, and that's your only one medieval map. There's also a red brick map in one of the retro jam packs. It is only two maps by Golden Boy and Ricky. There's a honey brick map in the honey jam pack, huh? I might end up playing the honey jam pack. I don't have too many jam packs on my list, but I have a couple. Um. But yeah, I, I like the uh, I like the aesthetic. I like the the purple fog, the purple haze, as it were. I like the. Uh, I mean, I I definitely like the uh, the encounters at the end. That definitely ramped things up quite a bit. I. <laughs> I was very surprised by the horde of knights near the beginning. So there was that. Um, but no, cool little layout and stuff. So let's read what's on Quedicted about this. And yeah, this is definitely a screenshot near the end of the map. You can see the ogres near that center set of ammo, and you can see one of the fiends over here. This this fog and sky remind me of like Cherry Seven Up or something. There's an early quad behind a door with no trigger near the start. Wow. Okay. Oops. Uh. So, editor's note says medium-sized, spacious metal runic-style fortress. This map requires an engine port with increased limits. Fog support recommended. Yeah. Anne says excellent map. Flem says this felt very much like Painkiller to me. It has no sense of purpose and just many monster hordes. I expected more from Ricky T23. I mean, 
kind of. Like, it definitely started out that way for sure. I feel like it was a little more than that, but I can I can kind of see that gray. I feel like it's funny because I was I was talking about how it was reminding me of other mapper stuff, and then finally it got to a point where I got I felt kind of like ambushed and blindsided, and then I was like, all right, now this feels like a Ricky T23 map because I feel like that's the thing I expect. Uh, Cotarello says, played on Nightmare, the difficulty was okay, except that the first room seems to be the hardest one. There are so many maps that have that problem. Where, like, it just seems like things are not balanced in your favor when you're starting out with only a shotgun. The architecture was average and the layout was nice, but this map is only for killing hordes. I like the positioning of secrets, but I found that the quake damages were worthless where they are found. By the way, when you first go to the gold door, you are teleported to the same place and it gives me an error. That's the same thing that happened to me. But it doesn't affect the gameplay. Hey, Francis, thanks for the raid. Ricky himself responded here. Thanks for commenting on my map, everyone. This map wasn't meant to be anything serious. I just had a bit of fun making it for a couple of weeks this summer. I think Ricky in here a few weeks ago said something like... Ricky, you said you have, like, a big project that like, has been in the works for forever, but every so often you just feel like making something quick, right? I mean, I thought this was a cool little map. Um, I definitely see, you know, people's point in that, like, it's largely, like, arena combat and horde combat. But I like the aesthetic. Flippy says, great map, especially on Hard and Nightmare. Cannot for the life of us uh, find the way of opening the secret with a quad behind it. <laughs> That's what Ricky was just talking about in chat. Add some co-op starts next time, though. It's a two-second job. Uh, Mike Taylor says, well, I thoroughly enjoyed this map every time I played it at least three times now. It's always fun to blast through hordes of enemies when ammo and armor are plentiful, though it would have been even more fun if I'd had explosives earlier. That's kind of what I was thinking. I never did find a rocket launcher, and the grenades came only very late in the game after the silver key. Mind you, I only found two secrets out of six, so I assume there's probably there, they're probably there to be had by more observant players. My only real gameplay gripe is this map suffers more than most from the problem of running out of ammo at the start and having way more than you need later on. It's a real shame, it makes the start a grind and the ending a cruise. For that reason, and because, as others have noted, the building is a bit blocky, I can't award it a full five stars, but it's certainly among my favorite four star maps. Thanks, Ricky. I needed to kill a lot of monsters. But, uh... Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, we've got some time, so I might as well throw on the other map that I have lined up, which is Quarantine. <laughs> Last comment made you happy. Uh... But yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at quarantine. I will take another quick break and switch things over, and then we'll get back and we'll do one more map tonight, which will be uh, this other one by Ricky. Well, before that name became so relevant, yeah, that's true. Topical. We've had a few uh, we've had a few maps map packs that have been uh, accidentally topical. Like, I mean, for that matter, Honey was, uh, took place in a ghost town where everyone got wiped out by poisoned water. Not quite the same thing as a pandemic, but still kind of a mood. Uh, anyway, give me a couple minutes and we will switch over to quarantine and finish the night with that. Why is this button not working? Here we go. Okay, we're back, and we're done looking at this map, but, uh, yeah, thanks again to, uh, to Ricky T for hanging out. Given, especially given how late it was, didn't realize it was that late for him. Definitely needs to get to bed at a good hour when you gotta work the next day. Um, let's go ahead and open up the other map by Ricky T that we wanted to play in the near future, which happens to be now. Uh, called Quarantine. We're actually playing the... There was a second version released of this that, uh... fixed some missing monsters, it looks like. And, uh... 
I mentioned that the other map was, uh, the one we just finished was the, uh, first non-base map by Ricky T that I played. Well, looks like we're back to base maps. Um, okay, so the, the top of the readme here actually says, this version 2 has a bug fix where 10 monsters were not spawned on hardened nightmare settings, and a couple of wonky textures. So I probably wouldn't even notice, because I would be playing this on normal anyway. Uh, also, let me do a thing. And start updating stuff that I forgot to update. Before I clear out the timer here. Okay, now I can push that button and clear that out. Okay. Uh, description. Was supposed to be doing college work and started doing this. This is a medium-sized base map for Quake. It contains a few monsters from the Quoth mod. Okay, so then I imagine I am going to need to run it with, uh, with the Quoth flag. No new sounds, no new graphics. I was too lazy to replace some old-school spawns with Quoth ones, but that's not really a bug. Wait. Quoth has different spawns? Hang on. Alright. Uh, let me close this up. And we will load up Quarantine with Quoth. Hang on, almost forgot to do that. That is such a low heap size that I don't think I even need to worry about supplying that. So let's load this up. There you go, Quarantino 2. Let's go ahead and check this one out and see... See what we think of this one. Um, the screenshot made this look like a much more... like... standard run-of-the-mill looking base map than some of the other ones. Like, it didn't look like it had co color lighting, but maybe that's just the screenshot being at a particular place that didn't show it off. So let's let's find out what we're in for here. Immediately an enforcer angry at us. Oh boy. <clears throat> oh, that's water. Okay. There's got to be a reason that's here. Yep. Uh, I found a secret that looked like it had capital S, C, R, and T in it. We got, so I think we just got armor from that, and some ammo for guns we don't have yet. Oh, I'm out of shells. That's not good.
Ow. Good place for health. I didn't really pay attention to how much armor I had. I just assumed I didn't have much of it. After taking a grenade to the face and taking all that damage. What is that noise? I was hearing a noise. Yeah, that. This door is open elsewhere. I don't know what that noise is, but I don't like it. I am probably going to die and have to redo a whole bunch of stuff. We health. <laughs> yeah, fat lot of good armor is going to do me when I have three health. All right, we got to do a whole ton of shit again. Wait a minute. I forgot this pick normal skill. All right, well, we're trying this on hard and we'll see what happens. I completely forgot to pick normal skill. He totally killed that guy for me. I should probably go back for that armor. Still worried about that noise. I'll probably find out what it is whenever I unblock the uh, silver key there. Oh, also, I shouldn't have gone for that armor, because there's other armor coming up here. I forgot. health. Cool. The 
That guy deserved it. I'm surprised that didn't hit me. I like how the nail hit him and then my shot immediately after that hit him. I know this is going backwards, but... I feel like I skipped... Okay, that's where the key is. Where am I hearing all that grumbling come from? Also, I don't know if I needed all those shells yet. I didn't mean to... Oh, that's not what I picked up. I picked up the backpack. Okay. I don't have much health here. Oh, look, a hole. There's, there's two of them. That says exit. Something just spawned. Oh boy. Oh boy, I can't move. I forgot I didn't kill these guys yet. Nice trick shot around that corner, jeez. I really didn't need those shells. Oh, this is the other side of that. And now there's rocket launcher dudes. And whatever that was. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, he was still hitting me. Whoops. Oh, shit. I didn't want to pick... I thought I saved after them. I forgot. I did not handle that well. I really did not handle that well. So we're gonna die immediately. I think he's dead. Oh, I can hit him through there. Okay, cool. What do you mean that's... Oh, what? That's not very fair at all. Well, at least one of them got it. to stop taking so many damn hits. Yeah, depending on what that guy... I baited out the melee last time.
Oh, okay. That opens after. That's like a delayed reaction. Weird. Ogres in a base map. I don't know why they would put these guys here when you've got the, uh... You got the enforcer types that also do grenades. So, like, why not just... Is that what I was hearing in here? Was ogres? That doesn't make any sense. Should be close to, yeah, this. Oh, literally that, okay. A nearby lift has been lowered. What nearby lift? The one right behind me. Yeah, I don't actually use, I don't use actual quick load. That's other buttons. But they're farther away from where my left hand normally sits than F2 and F3 are. spot. Uh, well, I could use armor. They seem to be giving me stuff for some reason. Nice, he helped. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, do I need to go down here again? I don't know that I do, but... It's making me think I do, given that there were new enemies here. Problem being, I have no health now. But I didn't notice a... I don't know if I noticed a gold door anywhere. Because I noticed the silver thing. Let's just follow the arrows for a bit. Don't suppose I left any health anywhere? This is the other side of that. This is where those holes were again. I'm gonna reload since I took unnecessary damage there. Whoops, I didn't actually want to come down this far, did I? 
Oh, whoops, now I'm all the way outside, which I really don't think I want. What's up with all the flashing lights here? Oh, hey, health. I actually did leave health somewhere. This might be where the guys are. Jump through here again, I should be able to get over there. Sure is a lot of guys. Okay, so. That even has a symbol saying gold key use here somewhere. Oh, it's, oh God, I didn't even notice it on that over there. That's a door? That doesn't look like a door. But okay, that's what I missed. This might be the end of the level. Or it might not. Will that go back up? Nope. More flickering lights. Good boys. You're not dead yet? Give me a fucking break, dude. How many times do I have to shoot you? Thought for sure that guy would be uh, close to dead, but nope. Apparently not. Wait, how many of them are there? I thought there was two. There's more than two, isn't there? That might be what confused me. Yeah, I think there's more than two. Is the Scourge of Armagon? No, this is, uh... This is a custom map that is quoth-based, which also has those guys which resemble... resemble Armagon, but are not Armagon. Um, this map is called Quarantine. It was released by Ricky T23 in 2013. Mm. Guess I'll save it here. Need to stop getting greedy and trading heads, but geez, they tr they fire immediately. I literally tripped over the nails. Yeah, there's three of them. Oh man, I thought he was dead. He was dead after. A oh jeez. Uh, you can get everything that I've played. You can get off of Quidicta.com. Ow. Crap. I keep getting two out of three. I'm trying more aggressive strats this time. Actually, if I can bottleneck them over there, that would work, but... Of 
Dude's got a hair trigger. Does he have like an enrage mode or something? Is this like drolls also? They have an enrage mode kind of thing. Shit. No, he's dead. Okay. We actually got them. Well, that looks like the exit. What else is going to warp in? There's four enemies left. And I bet the fourth one isn't going to be an enforcer. Yep. Surprise, it's another one of these jerks. God damn it. Again, the double KO. Mind you, I'm playing this on hard. I decided I didn't switch difficulty, and I'm not going to switch difficulty. Hell with it. Wait, what about the other... Oh, wow. Okay, they'll come in in a different order. Interesting. So this guy specifically comes in when you come down here. I mean, to be fair, I also only found one out of three secrets. There are a couple of elevators that do not go back up in this, so, like, you can't go back. But there you go. Here's the map. So, pretty cool base map. I feel like it's less... It feels less distinctive than Ricky T's other base maps, though. Largely because of, like... The lack of custom, like, colored lighting and whatnot. I feel like that really stood out, especially in the hand that feeds you. Um, and also, like, I think a couple of those maps also used, like... I think you said, like, Doom 3 textures and maybe some other stuff. Whereas this seemed to be straight up, like, base plus quoth. I completely ignored that armor that's staring me right in the face right now there. Whoops. Maybe that would have helped. I, I have a feeling, like, when I was reading the other Ricky T map reviews, it seemed like everybody largely uh, preferred Stark Monstrosity. I feel like, uh, I mean, Stark Monstrosity was also good. But I felt like the hand that feeds you stood out more to me in terms of just being interesting and liking the aesthetic and whatnot. I should try to keep some of those hit points. Yeah. Where the heck did this just drop me? This just dropped me on E4M4. That's an interesting decision. All right, let's see what other people said about this map. So, quarantine. Uh, this got a mix of reviews, so let's look at Catatonic versus Quarantine. Wow. Catatonic only got average from the editors, and Quarantine only got nice from the editors. Both of them got about similar... Uh, similar average out of the re user reviews. MFX says, if you liked my map, this one's a must. Only drawback are the limited weapons, which makes it a bit challenging at some point, but that's intended, I think. I did wonder, like, it seemed like they intentionally, like, Ricky intentionally left you with just shotguns and the regular nail gun in this. Uh, nice, quite a nice map. Good to see that the Quake community is still alive. It's alive even more so nowadays, I think. There's a ton of stuff in the, over the last three years that's come out, and a lot of it is super impressive. Not that, not that there wasn't super impressive stuff before that. Took you a while to realize you always spawn at 50 HP minimum. Yeah. I definitely took advantage of that. In a couple of the more episodic maps, or packs, that we played. I... There were definitely things that I came out in poor shape. I don't remember... I'd have to go back and check which ones that really happened with, because I can't remember whether it happened more with, like... Warp Spasm, which you would probably expect it to happen with, or Travail. Or uh, Abyss of Pandemonium it might have happened with. I really don't remember. But yeah, not much in the way of user reviews for this one. I wonder what map MFX is talking about, though. 
I'm pretty sure I've played a couple of MFX maps. Whoops. Uh... If we haven't played them yet, I plan to play them. They must be in my list somewhere. Yeah, I sequenced MFX after Terra City. So we will play MFX maps eventually. I wonder... When did MFX write that? Wait, I was reading the wrong thing. Hang on. What was I just reading? Oh, you know what? I was reading the the original quarantine reviews, but there was a there was a patch release, so I need to read these. Um, F MFX commented this in, on April eighth, twenty thirteen. So that might have been after MFX's like first map ever. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that was right after Clean Cut. Yeah, I played Arcane Dimensions. That was like the that was the first non like non id slash machine games thing I played. So you can find all the stuff that I played on this list, which is at that link. And Arcane Dimensions was how I got into all this stuff. Then I decided I should look at other community created content. And then we ended up playing all of this stuff. And now we're here. And we just played these. We did not play Something Wicked yet. I will play that next Saturday. But we played Honey tonight. We played these two Ricky T23 maps tonight. And there's a bunch of other stuff that I want to play. And yeah, that's, yeah, what Mopey said. Arcane Dimensions is what sent me down this path. Um, and I definitely think there's a there's a few particularly standout things that are worth playing. Um, among them, I would honestly say Subterranean Library was pretty cool. Altar of Storms is really unique. And if you're a fan of the Elder Scrolls, then this might look familiar to you. And you might get a kick out of it for that reason. Um, out of Tronin stuff, Arcanum stands out pretty, uh, pretty strong. But it is, it, it's still a pretty tough pack. Tronin stuff is known for being difficult. Um, Red 777 is a really good single map, uh, that is also quote based. Uh, uses the, uh, Contract Revoked, uh, Nave theme. Which, like, Contract Revoked and the Lost Chapters are worth playing just as, like, just to be, just to play the definitive, like, Nave experience. Like, those are what established that texture pack. Uh, what else was on here that was really good? Um, I was talking about, like, there are a few other Ricky T maps that I played. The Hand That Feeds You is the one that stood out the most to me. Um, Warp Spasm is one that a lot of people play up. It can be difficult. It's not... It's not perfect across the board. The first three maps... The, the fourth map is probably the weakest. The first three maps are cool. The third map especially is cool. Travail is a particularly strong episodic pack. It's got two episodes full of stuff. Um, Abyss of Pandemonium is another episodic pack that, uh... Has, its development spanned the course of pretty much a decade on and off. Uh, here's Contract Revoked The Lost Chapters. Contract Revoked came out a few years before that. Contract Revoked The Lost Chapters was, like, the official thing that used Quoth, I guess. Um... A lot of people give um, Insomnia a lot of credit. Like, people just keep mentioning Insomnia, even in the later CZG stuff. Um, Rubicon itself, I feel, wasn't that notable. It was most notable for the textures that it created. Um, Rubicon 2, I feel, was way more notable in terms of actual, like, mapping. 
Rubicon 2 is really cool. Um, and then one of my favorites still has to be on Toronto. Which, where even is that in this list? There's Insomnia, which came out in 2000. On Toronto was like 2004 or something, wasn't it? Yeah, here's on Toronto. Um, but yeah, um, Altar of Storms is blatantly a reference to uh, Oblivion, The Elder Sc Scrolls 4. So, uh, and it does some very interesting things that you don't really see much in Quake maps. So, like, the Altar of Storms was definitely, like, one of the most unique things to come before Arcane Dimensions. Um, the Marcher Fortress is another good one. Um, the Marcher Fortress is definitely another pretty tough map, but it... The Marcher Fortress, especially for when it came out, was really notable for, like, the scene that it set. And it had a lot of, like, had a lot of cool level design in it. Had a, a really cool, just, like, overall, like, scene that you get to see at the very beginning. Um, uh, that was 2004 or 2005-ish? Where was that? Yeah, that was 2005. Um, Bastion of the Underworld and the Marcher Fortress were both by Kin. Bastion of the Underworld was a lot more, like, there were quite a few arena uh, combat areas in that one, so I feel like the Marcher Fortress was, was significantly more interesting, but it, it definitely still gave you hordes to fight at some points. But yeah, and like, this is not nearly all of the maps on Predicted. This is just a subset of, of stuff that either I thought looked interesting, I was mostly looking at episodic things, or like, packs with a lot of stuff in them, and have highly rated stuff. Uh, Francis T gave me a lot of suggestions on, like, particular mappers to play stuff by. So, like, um, last night and last Sunday, like a week ago, we were playing maps by Van. Um, but we've done, like, stuff by CZG, Necros, then we will do MFX in the future, we will do Digs in the future. Um, we did maps by Ned K. We did, we've done a bunch of stuff by Tronin and PM. Um, one of the earliest Tronin sets that really kind of, like, set the standard for later ones was Coven of Ebony. You will see a lot of later Tronin maps, or packs, still using enemies that you saw first in Coven of Ebony. Coven of Ebony itself, I felt, was a little problematic. It had a lot of excessively close quarters combat with a lot of enemies to fight in those close quarters. So it's a little claustrophobic at times. But, uh... If you want a historical reference point, Coven of Ebony is something to look at. But yeah, so we played all those. And there's plenty more to come that we'll be doing in the coming weeks. I, I'm planning to still go through packs through at least September. October, I'm planning to switch to Dusk. Then we might go on to Quake 2 stuff, and then come back to PAX after that. Organic Dissolution, I've never heard of that one. Shambler Knot, feel like I haven't heard that name yet. Whoa, that's interesting. It's a nice, it's not an excellent from the editors, but it's a nice. Guess I can download that one for later. It's definitely a unique uh, visual appearance there. I've never really seen fluorescent green before. Um, let's look at the other reviews on the other quarantine page, because I completely missed them. I like this one, pretty simplistic and standard base map, but fun to play in good layout. The transparent glass is a nice touch. Oh, does that make use of Water Alpha also interesting? I already had that turned down. Nice to see so many new Quake goods, but base and corridor style really is not my cup of tea. Gaz has a video. Crutcherillus is good, mostly linear layout and with varying complexity and detail and brushwork. With predictable and repeated monster placement most of the times, ammo and armor quantity is pretty good, but would be perfect if it were better positioned along the map. Health is a bit low. Difficulty is okay, but the combat after the gold key door is hellish and can be considered unfair and nightmare. Yeah. 
Uh, Mike Taylor says, finished with all kills and all secrets, a rare 100%. I have to say, I really like this. It's not as big or clever at, or sophisticated as some of Ricky's other maps. The hand that feeds you in Stark Monstrosity. Yeah, those are the two that people go to. But it's an absolute blast to play, plowing magnificently through waves of mostly low-powered enemies who threaten to overwhelm by sheer numbers. It's arguably a bit too easy. I may have a go in Nightmare, though large numbers of grunts can be, well, nightmarish at that level. But that's okay. They're, this is just a whole lot of fun, and that's oddly something that can sometimes be overlooked in Quake. Richard says this... Wow, he rated this a 2. Jeez. This map has moments of decency, but overall I found the experience lacking in several areas. There are certain visual elements that are well built and which provide a good highlight to the map's geometry, but I feel that in general the brushwork in this level is passable at best. Big blocky rooms, strange staircases, and a poor outdoor area, which is like 0.5% of the map, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, for me, this level needs to succeed on the merit of its gameplay. Sadly, it struggles with this as well. Enemy introduction is well paced at the start, with the beginning containing only enforcers and grunts, then ramping up towards tougher enemies such as defenders and rocketeers. Thrown into the mix is the occasional fiend or ogre, which helps to add a bit of variety and break up the monotony of fighting the same style of enemy again and again. Then comes Eddie. I like Ed a lot. He's a good way to replace the Shambler if you're looking for a mini-boss style enemy for your base themed level, and don't want to involve the other world at all, which is beside the point considering the fiends. But like a Shambler, you need to place them in an environment where the odds favor the player. Long corridors preceded by an array of tough, tough health-draining enemies and a distinct lack of health pickups that Ed can spam his nails down makes for an incredibly frustrating experience. So that's the hallway with three of them at the end that, that uh, I had a lot of problems with. Yeah, that's, that's worth calling out. That was probably the low point of the map. Either give the player effective cover from which they can get up close and deal damage while easily escaping to safety, or give them a better stack. Don't just expect them to patiently duck in and out of cover and try and pick high threat enemies off from a distance. It's not fun, and in the case of Eddie, whose nail attack can sometimes come with almost no wind-up time, as I found out, almost impossible to do with low health. Oh yeah, so most of these, uh, to Mopi's point, most of these I've been playing with Quake Spasm, uh, as you can see in my stream title. Um, Arcane Dimensions recommends Quake Spasm Spiked, if you're going to play that. <clears throat> but yeah, um, the others that Mopey Bloke mentions are also capable. I know Joe Quake is also pretty popular nowadays. Uh, very hard map, I didn't find a grenade launcher on the map, and without grenades there was very few ammo to kill monsters. I couldn't kill the last boss, so I ran to the teleport directly. I didn't think ammo was that problematic in this. Health, maybe. Which I, th I think goes with what, uh, I think... Was it Mike Taylor who mentioned that? Someone in the reviews was basically saying, like, ammo seemed fine, but health seemed scarce. Um, which, I mean, on hard, I kind of expect it to be. That's, that's what happened to me with the second map, which I actually played first. But what people seem to canonically call the second map. On, um... On Honey by CZG that we played tonight as well was, like... I was having tons of trouble with running out of ammo and health, and oh, it turns out I was playing on hard. Might explain a lot. But anyway, yeah, this map does not stand out to me as much as the hand that feeds you in Stark Monstrosity, but still a neat little map. But yeah, I, I definitely agree with Pritchard's comment about the hallway full of eddies. Um, but yeah. So that's cool, we got a few things done tonight. Let me uh, put this one in my books locally before uh, before the timer disappears. And uh, I will have the site updated based on tonight's stuff uh, sometime shortly afterwards. I just need to pull uh, my my time for completion of Honey off of the VOD afterwards. But anyway, uh, again, the next thing we will be playing next weekend, I do this on weekends only, Saturdays and Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Next thing we will be playing will be Something Wicked, which is another Tronin and PM map pack. And then we will be getting into In the Shadows, which is by Sock, followed by a couple of maps that made it into Arcane Dimensions, but we'll be playing the pre-Arcane Dimensions versions to see how much they differ. Um, I'm curious about this because I ended up quite by accident picking up, um, Adamantine Cruelty. 
which I didn't realize was a pre-Arcane Dimensions version of a map that was in Arcane Dimensions. It was in Arcane Dimensions as Arcane Automontine. And that map changed quite a bit from before Arcane Dimensions to in Arcane Dimensions. Like, even the nature of the sequence changed. So, I'll be curious. We'll probably spend a little extra time on the Horde of Zendar and Backstein Gothique to, uh, to compare the pre-AD and actual AD versions. But that's what'll be coming up next. So yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. Hope you have a good night.